What's good, everybody? Welcome to Boompa World, where today we're looking at Crash of the Titans. Oh my god, bro. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and this is fantabulous. This game came out on every console ever. If your device had a screen, there was like a 70% chance Crash of the Titans released for it in October 2007. The sixth mainline Crash game, and it's going back to his origins and giving Crash tribal arm tattoos. Yeah, everybody got this weird ass makeover. I wish we got this little pencil bag that came with the monster edition of this game, but alas. Crash Twin Sanity received mixed reviews and it kind of banged, so I really hoped this game could follow in its older brother's footsteps. Let's go through this game and it's Crash's first fully co-op adventure. So we're definitely checking that shit out. And let's go and be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Help my channel grow, please. Radical Entertainment developed Crash of the Titans and also made The Simpsons Hit and Run and some other good games, uh, Wayne's World for the NES. And now it's their turn after Crash Tag Team Racing got positive reception. The keys to the franchise, baby. And to an even further extent than to Insanity, they wanted to shake up the formula. Or I don't know, maybe even it's like a diet reboot of the series. But everybody just looks so different. I was gonna say, I feel like this would piss off OG Crash fans and it would make people write off this game. And then I started playing and I was feel like the fact they took out crates and like the whole game just doesn't even feel like a Crash game. So that might make Crash fans unhappy as well. It almost had no resemblance to any Crash game before it, but I feel like that was the point, so I'm gonna let them cook. The game's original concept was called Crash Jackin', which I mean I get why they changed the name. Both titles revolve around the fact that you're gonna take control of these big ass enemies a decade before Mario Odyssey. A lot of people grew up on this as their crash and have nostalgia for it. I, I wish I could say the same. At, at first, it really just felt like an unremarkable beat-em-up game like I've played before. Really simple combos and controls overall. Crash was like super floaty and all punchy. To take control of the Titans, you either have to like knock them back a little or friend kick them once and take over. Fill it with mojo. I noticed that along with Crash, all the Titans have their own little tribal tattoos and design, which I can respect. They did the, the tiger from older Crash games just dirty as hell. But he used to be like a Tasmanian tiger, so I don't know what the hell happened. Gameplay-wise, fighting the variety of Titans and getting to control them was rewarding. Collecting this mojo off the ground, little pellets, it really felt like I was playing Lego Indiana Jones for a second. If they said this was the next Crash game, I'd just be like, dead ass. You could yell and stomp through walls with a guy, beat ass and bring spikes up from the ground with another. Even throw little crystal spears with this jackal looking dude. I really liked running around with him and yelling jackal. But yeah, the variety was just fun. No abundance of crates was really weird though, but they had these little spy bots you destroy. Uh, just three little like collectibles per level and I liked scouring the map for them. Basic, but I still wonder what they had against the crates. What's next? Me and my roommate were still passing the controller and kind of liking this game. Floating down with Crash and using his flippy double jump and even his spinning like a top attack. It was all creative for sure, very new with like the source materials. 2v1ing these big dudes sucked hard if you didn't have a power up kick, but luckily in chapter 3, I found a glitch to get them off my ass in this particular arena. Look at them standing there. Yeah, sometimes they overwhelm you with a bunch of titans and you just crash and they kind of wail on you. And it definitely feels like random difficulty spikes in like each level that can easily get you a game over if you don't block and kind of go off. The gameplay was just so basic and I really wanted to enjoy the combat but it just was like stale from the moment we started. Even despite upgrades and like slowly unlocking new combos it just wasn't enough. The only time we really died was being overwhelmed by these dudes smacking non-stop. Just general chaos and confusion. Not really much design to it. We were on hard mode because we want crash games to beat our ass. But this game was the most I actually literally got my ass beat in the game. The platforming seemed low key easy, like not a problem this time around. I'm jumping around like a damn trapeze legend. But these boring overcrowded arenas would end up killing me a good bit. You kind of have to strategize what titan you use and it was fun once you made it through the hordes of little minions and titans but in like a beat em up way, White Crash aka Carbon Crash is the second player with an interesting little backpack mechanic and we are about to beat these titans ass. Like the platforming sections are so cool and like the backgrounds fit and it just looks beautiful. The increased boarding sections and ability to ride around whenever you want is really sweet but it felt like after like two minutes or so of like every fun platforming section you'd have to make it through like a five minute plus locked off area or just bad guy after bad guy smacking the shit out of you. Before Mario Odyssey like I said was even an idea in the matrix you were jacking enemies using an insane variety of attacks with like a stamina bar too. This shit was badass and I felt bad, but I would always jack the titans right away and not leave Carbon Crash much of a chance. But yeah, this was definitely the bright spot in the game. The titans variety was okay, a lot of reskins, there was basically some big dudes. 
the jackals, some bats, some big ass elephant dudes. They're basically like Logan Paul's NFTs. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Another cool feature is taking control of bosses. I mean, that just sounds cool as an idea. And even though everybody's slow and clunky, it's fun to just be overpowered and run around smacking these little dudes. But honestly, nothing about this reminds me of Crash besides like the story and the characters. Even the platforming with the double jump and stuff just feels like something slightly different. Even when Twin Sanity opened the levels up, it still made me feel like I was playing a Crash game. I can't really explain it. There's a lot of beautiful open landscapes that catch my eye here that show they pulled off the concept art. Jumping around these areas made the game feel like 70% cooler and actually kind of worth playing. It's a shame the majority of the game is really just this though. I wish I could have spent all my time in the cool looking places instead. I find it interesting games like this and like Sonic Unleashed from this time tried to implement beating ass into their platforming games. Just kind of felt unnecessary. Super bare bones puzzles, super drawn out gameplay that just felt like fluff to me for the most part. It's like in this weird middle area between platformer and beat em up, like don't be scared, just commit big. As the game went on, I asked for more precision platforming. The co-op camera obviously was kind of on trash, but going through this with a friend is like a million times better because if you guys both don't die, then the other can respawn, so you don't lose a life and it's just lit. And you can end up wrecking the once cheap and overpowered enemies through teamwork. It was really hard to get an opinion on the soundtrack as you were beating ass so often you couldn't really hear or think of a song that went too crazy. Uh, but I'm sure there were some bangers in there, some boppers. They're playing in the background the whole video. I liked it better than that acapella shit on Twin Sanity. Yeah, so there was a good bit to roll my eyes at, but I saw bright moments through the cracks, jumping down waterfalls, climbing up trees, shredding down some tight ass hills, and that's when you saw the vision, or at least the part of the vision that I enjoyed. Crash, I guess, is still running around a pretty island, but he just has to punch and kick his way to victory. I could definitely see people being super nostalgic if they grew up playing co-op with their brother or something and just like feeling like it was a true adventure. But yeah, as a first time player, it left me wanting to just play their platformer, striving for something more. There was completionist bonuses where you could unlock skins and stuff for Crash, which was cool. And you could also look at concept art as you played too, which I found to be neat. You'd have to unlock it in each level. Running around cool set pieces, then stopping in your tracks to fight 500 guys was pretty much the formula for the entire game. The platforming was simple for pretty much the entire game, minus some terrible depth perception from my failing retinas. This game is definitely geared more towards kids this time around, even on hard difficulty. I think all they did was throw more monsters at us, which was pretty cheap. The level's art direction was probably what kept um, we, me intrigued the most. Looking forward to what style they'd go for the next level. I loved how Neo's like robot and like his, it looked like a house, like his Neo's manor looked all royal. It was cool, they were chilling here in like an earlier cutscene and then we got to play it in a level later. I feel like they did have some attention to detail like that in world building and scope. Each area's little minions had unique styles and voices to the area and said a lot of goofy stuff. Things like that made this game feel like you were traversing different areas and exploring a new world at least. Simple puzzle mechanics sprinkled in with the titans. A faster crash switching from platforming to snowboarding to fighting. When they actually got the formula mixed just right, uh, it actually was fun and full of variety. This mission was probably my favorite, I mean just look at it. Starting outside this old looking Deku tree and climbing him through these insides was sweet. I still almost felt that sense of adventure in my stomach throughout the game. A lot of these lab levels in the middle of the game kind of ran together for me though and they didn't really introduce much new. After halfway through the game, pretty much everything is the same besides some like slightly altered titans and put way too much beat em up gameplay in relation to jumping and doing actual fun stuff. The cutscenes were standout performances though at least, pretty funny, like usual, some good voice actors from childhood shows. And LET'S JUST DANCE BABY! It's not in this version, but in the DS games cutscenes they have a fucking laugh track, which... Oh sure, I keep trying to kill you, but why dwell on the past? I don't see why you want to bring in someone new! Who does that? I just found it was funny. Dr. Engine going Jekyll and Hyde in this cutscene was one of my favorites during this uh, part of the game. Despite the good cutscene, his boss battle was trash. They ended up not standing out too much and just feeling like another overcrowded battle arena. Like what is this? Pokemon Rumble? Look how far we have come. This is the trenches. These bosses. It's just... It's just a bunch of enemies. 
But yeah, out of all the redesigns, Uka Uka got did so dirty, to the point him and Nina actually try to cut Neo out of the evil plans and just defeat Crash themselves. Usually when I go through a game, I like giving kind of level by level look, but I swear, the whole game, it's like the same. Ideas in each area, with just different backgrounds and different titans. I hated fighting these bad dudes though, because they like blocked, like guarded way more than any other enemy. And then they would slash their ass off. Towards the end of the game, we have to make our way inside Cortex's robot, uh, which set up for this absolutely unfunny ass joke by Nina. Ash, get out of my robot! This is my body and my right to choose! Oh. She made Coco finish building it, and they were about to blow up Wumpa Islands until you guessed it. Crash comes to save the day. They probably could have used Neo here, but nah, he, they had him tied up, uh, and we don't even get to fight that man for a second at the end of this game. But Uka Uka tried to evolve himself, and we had to beat his ass, but just look at this boss battle. Just an absolute clusterfuck of respawning enemies, projectiles. Like, is this fun to you? We got to take control of Uka Uka, and we entered his mind and had to destroy three generators. And it took way longer than it should have because we died a bunch here, the camera was trash, everything was against us. Anytime a level got us stuck, it wasn't due to like a platforming challenge or like a new thing. It just felt like random bu button mashing to fight waves of like uninspired enemies. They reskinned things for each level, which sometimes felt cool, creative, and other times kind of just came off lazy. Each level had a quirky pun, and this was one referencing Minority Report, this one weird ass movie I remember about cops and pre crime. The levels did give you a grand sense of the world and seeing things looming in the background or running towards a set piece was a constant and it definitely kept you drawn to the game. Just gotta wait till Uka Uka open up, opens up this area and then we can have fun again. The last three or so levels inside the robot kind of flew by and felt like a reward. The best levels yet, with more cool purple designs, lava and poison everywhere, it was just a badass final area. But yeah, running through the construction of the robot and this 2.5D segment was really cool. I wish there was more of this. This gameplay was really nice. It kind of reminded me of like the Game Boy games. It was a cool lead up to the final boss too. But if you want something done right, use a giant spider bot. The ultimate spider bot or some shit. Similarly to Uka Uka, now we have to just destroy the three gears of the robot instead of like the generators. And we just take control and pretty much do the same formula. And as the game wraps up, I feel like, once again, a Crash game leaves me with a few more questions and answers with its final cutscene. You did it, Crash! Thanks, big brother! Oh, gross. Get a room. Neo was getting PG-13. You were a skank! I'm just so proud of you right now. I'm still going to spank you stupid for this. I thought they were gonna fade to like a bunch of crashes dancing again, but they weren't so brave. I feel like if this game was called like Skylanders Titans featuring Crash, it could have been a, considered a banger, but in the end it just feels like a misstep. Radical Entertainment was confused, misguided, a little bit befuddled. They had a lot of great art and level design, and on paper it sounds like a fun game, but for me, the repetitive combat kills it, puts a fork in a great formula of platforming and racing around grinds the pace to a halt, and low-key put Crash Bandicoot on life support for a few years. You can't deny, he lost all his clout, but he's back now, and it's all good, but yeah, I hope this video doesn't come off as too butthurt, because in the end, I still had a good time with Crash of the Titans, but I just gotta keep it real, keep it Boompa. Travis, a second Carbon Crash, how did you feel about this one? What's up, Boopa World? I am so excited to be back to talk about another entry in the Crash world. You know, it's it's really hard to, for me to talk bad about Crash. I love Crash. He's a very special character to me. I grew up on Crash, throughout the Cortex, Twin Sanity, first Crash 4. You know, this is the first Crash game I can say. Honestly, I didn't enjoy the first half. Um, I found it very, very repetitive. You know, I, it just didn't feel like Crash to me. Uh, personally, not to say there wasn't good things about the game. I don't know. It was just weird to see Crash in a beat em up. The the last five missions, I'll say, were really funny to me and kind of redeemed the game in a way. Went made the game for me go from a two out of ten to like a five. Um, it just got ridiculous, but the level designs were a lot better. Um, and I, you know, I was thinking the whole time when I was playing the last few missions, they should have did this sooner. You know, think about how many people. Um, played half the game, got disinterested, and me and uh, 
Boompa agreed this would be, I don't know if I would play this game alone, <laughs> or I don't know if I could beat it alone. You definitely need a friend to laugh with at this game. Back to the level design, it just, it was just a little bit overly redundant. And when you were in the, the rumbles or whatever with the beasts, um, there was, it felt like there was no rhyme and reason to beat them. I, I don't have a ton to say about this game, I'll say again, it was, it was the worst Crash game I ever played, but I'm, I, I'm glad I played it with Boompa because I, I really want to beat all the Crash games. Um, hopefully Mind Over Mutant next, but yeah, this game, 5 out of 10. Like I said, the last few missions redeemed it to me. Um, that was the best part of getting to play with my friend, you know, that's what redeemed it. But yeah, if you see this game, it might be worth some time for some dumb co-op fun, but don't pay like 30 bucks or something for it. But yeah, especially if you're like big Crash fans, it might be cool to check out and you want to see some weird shit. But there's just a lot more quality out there to the point that I don't think Crash or any of his fans would judge you if you skip this one out. I hope I wasn't too harsh on this one. Even Pimp My Ride had its charm for me. But this one just felt kind of like a stale AAA game from the moment it cut on. I'm just being honest. Overall, this game is pretty forgotten in the grand scheme of Crash. And I mean, yeah, we can say it was like a weird puberty phase. That's cool with me. Crash of the Titans deserved better. I mean, I don't know. Not really. But yeah, that's all we got time for today. So if you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more shit like this. All the love is very much appreciated. Uh, see you guys next time.